respected chairpersons, my personal friend uh, Ananda and uh, Major, my colleagues, my senior Professor Sansei. I am really honored today to get this opportunity of delivering this oration in the name of the great physician, Dr. Raj. And I thought this subject must be a chest related. So that is why I chose this subject. When Professor Chandrasekhar here asked me whether you can deliver this lecture. So I agreed for this. And I am working on this disease probably from 1983 onwards. Because my professor, my chief, Professor C. N. Devanayu, has put me into this work and later on I took over what he wanted me to do. So today I am one of the members of the Cystic Fibrosis Working Group in India and currently I am involved in CF research with the help of John Hopkins University of USA and University of Illinois Chicago and we are currently developing a drug which may alter the chloride channel in cystic fibrosis patients. So with this I would like to present this operation. Beware the salty child, but they will surely die. This is a European folklore, and those days, any child who tasted salty by kissing, they will say, oh, the child is salty tasting, definitely going to die. But nobody knew what the disease was. So this is the background of sea. It is an inherited disease that causes thick, sticky mucus to build up in the lungs and the digestive tract. So both the lung and the pancreas is involved. They are the most common type of chronic lung disease in children and young men. So if you come across a chronic lung disease, especially in children and young adults, I am not talking about people above 40, above 50, and it may result in early death. Any background of this genetically is the most common legal inherited disease affecting the Caucasians. But not uncommon in Asians. This is what we have found out. It is autosomal recessive. I will tell you what is autosomal recessive. And in Caucasian populations, 1 in 2500 live birth, there is a CF child. So that is the magnitude problem there. And the carrier frequency is about 4 persons. There is a single gene disease, CFTR7Q, and the gene discovered only very recently. That is, even after I started my work in Chennai, in 1989, the CF gene was discovered. There are around more than 1,000 mutations described. That is why we are not able to genetically prove CF in all the cases. But if you see, the Delta 54 age is the maximum number of cases in CF. So if anybody is positive for Delta 58, they are CF patients. So, coming to the pathology and pathophysiology of this disease, CF is a genetic disease that affects a number of organs in the body, especially the lungs and pancreas, by clogging them with sticky mucus. That is the basis of the disease. The lungs are clogged, the pancreas is clogged. So, there is no secretions coming out of these uh, areas. So, secretions 
sinking into the bronchus, into the pancreatic duct, hampered the progression or the normal work of the, these two organs. Thin mucus in the lung becomes an area where the organism can colonize and inflammation, constant inflammation, constant infection and damage to the organs. Millions of Americans carry the defective CFG but do not have any symptoms because a person with CF must have two defective CF genes. With one CF gene, you cannot get a disease. So, if you carry one defective CF gene, you are a carrier. So, two carriers give birth to a child and both these carriers give one copy of their defective gene to the child. The child gets two genes. So, that is a CF child. And the disease is most common, deadly, inherited disorder affecting the Caucasians of the United States. Now, what is the CF magnitude in India? CF was thought to be extremely rare in India. In my school days, I did not, nobody taught me about cystic fibrosis in India. And we were talking about mucoviscidosis of the pancreas. Or no one talked about cystic fibrosis in the lung in India. And if you look at the, the most important test book in chest medicine, Fraser and Barry, say that it is uncommon in non points But what is the reality? CF is probably far more common in people of Indian origin than previously thought. Why is this? We do not know. But I can tell you that certain links, India was ruled by British. And there are certain pockets in India where there were colonies like Pondicherry, Chalicherry, Mali, colonies of European countries. And then there is a migration from the north, from through Kashmir, the Mughals coming down to India. So, we can definitely have this gene in India. But all of them are not CF children. Because I told you that you should have two copies of CF gene in a CF child. So we may be carriers. So if there is a consanguineous parentage, there are more chances of getting two copies in the child. So if anybody, any child with a chronic lung disorder and a consanguineous parentage, think about CF. So the lack of awareness is one of the reasons that we are not picking up CF in India. So our estimate now, we have a body in India, we have come across and an arbitrary calculation is 1 in 10,000 to 40,000 live birth in India. So looking at our population, maybe 1.4 billion, sir? Yeah. So what will be the magnitude of our problem? We almost like a US uh, incidence. <coughs> So most children diagnosed by fear by their second birth. So in India also we diagnose the case very late, maybe at the age of 4 or 50 years. A small number however are not diagnosed until the age of 18 or older. So that is the cases which come up a little later. And these patients usually have a milder form of disease. That is why they are not really picked up. Now if you look at this chart, you know clearly that we have two carrier patients, parents here, have one defective CF gene, one copy, and the mother also have one defective CF gene. So one in four is the ratio that they will get a CF uh, child. So this father and this mother gave one copy to this child. So he has two CF defective mutations in him, so he is a 
years challenge. Whereas this, in short, to have a better understanding. Now the clinical features, if you look at the fifth, which is secretion of the respiratory tract, which will enhance bacterial colonization, mucosal inflammation, mucosal hypertrophy, recurrent LRDA, bronchitis. So this, everybody knows how bronchitis is develops. Now again, in the pancreas, if you look, thick visit secretions in the pancreas, so pancreatic insufficiency, meconium myelitis. This is very important. Meconium peritonitis, steatoria, and failure to thrive. Now slowly we are going into the clinical picture, so you will have an idea where you will look for CO. Now another problem is increased the chloride content in this stretch. Salty taste on wheezing, increased the salt wasting and dehydration in hot weather. In 1948, New York had the large and the biggest heat wave where a lot of children were brought into the casualty with the dehydration and hyponatremia. So there is a physician who, his name is Dana Agnes, he found out that majority of the children who had hyponatremia had fear. So he started working on this to find out why they have uh, hyponatremia. And then shortly, within, within what, a few years, he could find out that there is a defect in the chloride channel. So they have excessive secretion of chloride into the sweat glands, out of the sweat glands. They use a lot of sweat, sodium and chloride. So this is the reason that water is not retained in the exocrine glands or in the bronchus. And that is the reason that there is a thick visit mucus in the bronchus or in the exocrine glands of the pancreas. So that is how the sweat has come into importance. And then, as I told you, this was the initial uh, German folklore and then we were the baby child as well. Typically, most of the CF children have wrinkling on their palms. By looking at the palm of the CF child, you can say that Yes, this child may be CF because the loss of sodium and chloride from the skin, their palms become wrinkly. And a small, a huge test, a very simple test to do that is if you dip the fingers of the child in a mug uh, of water, keep it for about 5 minutes, and then take it out, you can see the wrinkling very, very clearly. So that is one of the tests for seniors. Now if you look at the classical features, you can start from top, ENG, chronic sinusitis, nasal polyposis, lungs, cough, sputum, chronic, air flow obstruction, chronic, recurrent infection, especially sputum or nasal erogenosa. That person explained to you, sputum or nasal erogenosa is one of the major problems in cystic fibrosis. They colonize in the lung and it is very difficult to eradicate sputum or nasal population in the lung. So suppose if you get a child with a pseudomonas in the sputum, think about CF. Because usually children do not get pseudomonas infection or the young adults do not get pseudomonas. Because if you have a structurally damaged lung, if the lung is structurally damaged, like bronchitis disease or cystic disease, the colonization is more by pseudomonas. So whenever you see a X-ray chest with bronchial disease or cystic lung disease, patient coming with pneumonia or chest infection, high fever, think about pseudomonas first. Cover pseudomonas first. Unless and until you are proved that it is not pseudomonas. So sexually damaged lung will have pseudomonas colonization. And if you come into the GI, pancreatic insufficiency, pancreatitis, meconium ideas, why it is there? The sex organs, obstructive. I have one case picked up, see it picked up by a urologist. Congenital absence of vast difference. He sent the case to me and the case was a sick fibrosis. So even urologist can diagnose CF. So what is the problem in the lung? I told you CFTR is cystic fibrosis, transmembrane uh, reduction, conduction reduction defect. So this is 
for the sweat abnormality, hypervisual suspicions, bacterial infection, excessive inflammation, separation, ulceration, and bronchitis. So that's the problem in the lung. This is a picture of Mecaud MID. If you look, do a contrast cinema, you can see that there is a meconium ileus, there is ileus there. And these children do have rectal prolapse. If you see a rectal prolapse in a young child, think about here. And sometimes they manifest unusual manifestations like severe hypokalemia, hypernatremia. That is, children, children will have thoughtless diarrhea, which they come with hypernatremia, and sometimes with meconium ileus equivalent. In radiology, there is not much dissolving. Recently uh, described, they can have hyperinflation because of the asthmatic tendency. They can have peribronchial thickening. They have mortal shadows, rain shadows, large shadows like lung collapse and hyalur retinopathy. And in CT cells, you can see cystic bronchitis, peribronchial thickening, mucoid impaction, areas of central lobular opacities. And this is a X-ray of a CF child. How see? Look how fast they see a progress in one year's time. Lots of modeling shadows here and there. You may think that this could be a uh, mini tuberculosis, but since we know that this is a CF child, and clubbing is very very common. So if you see a child with clubbing, usually children do not get clubbing, but in CF invariably they have clubbing. And what are the reports of cystic fibrosis in India? Lots and lots of case reports from India, many of them, but ours is the largest series. It was, we approved the 24 numbers and a few by uh, uh, autopsy also. So this is the series which is from Chennai. So we have the largest series, but now uh, all the industrial medical sciences New Delhi have taken over, they have a larger series now. Now if you look at the CF population in India, this is recently developed from Delhi. A few centers in Jammu and Kashmir, Delhi has a number of cases, very few from West Bengal. And now if you look at this southern part of India, there are lots of centers where there are cystic fibrosis. And our series shows the largest a uh, number of children from Telisiri and Mahi from Kerala. So in, in Chennai we have performed around 4,900 and out of which we could see around 170 cases of cystic fibrosis. So in Chennai we have diagnosed so far of all these years 170 cases of cystic fibrosis out of which 98 are male and uh, 72 are female. The mean age of diagnosis is 46 months. Thanks to the pediatricians of Chennai, if I name very few, Dr. Vardhiri Vandarajan and Dr. Balasu Prabhupada, Kanji Kamakoti Children's Hospital, Dr. Vasan from KK Nagar, they are all there, they are constantly looking for CF and they picked up the larger number of CF cases in Chennai. And if you look at the total number of cases in India, so far is 470 out of 110 died. And our oldest patient is 40 years, he is from Delhi. In Chennai series, it is 28 years now because the our oldest patient of 30 years died. So what is the problem in the diagnosis? Teaching in medical schools, nothing. Today, today if you look at the curriculum, nobody teaches cystic fibrosis in India. Awareness, both physicians and parents. Sweat testing only in few centers in India, delayed diagnosis, and we see them in an advanced stage, and we have poor resources. So, how do we suspect? I'll give you a small tip here. Child presenting with recurrent pneumonia. Think about here. Meconium medius, very important. I will show you one slide on this. Malus of pancreatic origin, significant CF theory of oil droplets in stools, metabolic alkalosis, hypernatremia, hypokalemia, pseudomonas in sputum, and child treated as asthma but developing clubbing <coughs> later. And if you have a syndrome complex in a young individual, I am not talking about age above 40, 
if somebody sometimes has bronchial cases, sinusitis, difficult way, abdominal pain, signs of small absorption, male, okay, this you can stop. In children, if you look at this syndrome complex, this may be cystic fibrosis. In short, to have a better understanding. Now the clinical features, if you look at the fifth, which is secretion of the respiratory tract, which will enhance bacterial colonization, mucosal inflammation, mucosal hypertrophy, recurrent LRDA, bronchitis. So this, everybody knows how bronchitis is develops. Now again, in the pancreas, if you look, thick with the secretions in the pancreas, so pancreatic insufficiency, meconium ileus. This is very important. Meconium peritonitis, steatoria, and failure to thrive. Now slowly we are going into the clinical picture, so you will have an idea where you will look for CEO. Now another problem is increased chloride content is stretch. Salty taste on wasting, increased salt wasting and dehydration in hot weather. In 1948, New York had the large and the biggest heat wave where a lot of children were brought into the casualty with the dehydration and hyponatremia. So there is a physician whose name is Dana Agnes. He found out that majority of the children who had hyponatremia had fear. So he started working on this to find out why we have uh, hyponatremia. And then shortly, within, within what, a few years, he could find out that there is a defect in the chloride channel. So they have excessive secretion of chloride into the sweat glands, out of the sweat gland. They use a lot of sweat, sodium and chloride. So this is the reason that water is not retained in the exocrine glands or in the bronchus. And that is the reason that there is a thick, which is mucus in the bronchus or in the exocrine glands of the pancreas. So that is how the sweat has come into importance. And then, as I told you, this was the initial uh, German folklore and then we were the baby child as well. Typically, most of the CF children have wrinkling on the palms. By looking at the palm of the CF child, you can say that Yes, this child may be CF because the loss of sodium and chloride from the skin, their palms become wrinkly. And a small, a huge test, a very simple test to do that is if you dip the fingers of the child in a mug uh, of water, keep it for about five minutes, and then take it out, you can see the wrinkling very, very clearly. So that is one of the tests for CFs. Now if you look at the classical features, you can start from top, ENG, chronic sinusitis, nasal polyposis, lungs, cough, sputum, chronic, air flow obstruction, chronic, recurrent infection, especially sputum or nasal erosinosa. The third person explained to you, sputum or nasal erosinosa is one of the major problems in cystic fibrosis. They colonize in the lung and it is very difficult to eradicate sputum or nasal population in the lung. So suppose if you get a child with a pseudomonas in the sputum, think about CF. Because usually children do not get pseudomonas infection or the young adults do not get pseudomonas. Because if you have a structurally damaged lung, if the lung is structurally damaged, like bronchial disease or cystic disease, the colonization is more by pseudomonas. So whenever you see a X-ray chest with bronchial cystic or cystic lung disease, patient coming with pneumonia or in chest infection, high fever, think about pseudomonas first. Cover pseudomonas first. Unless and until you are proved that it is not pseudomonas. So sexually damaged lung will have pseudomonas colonization. And if you come into the GI, pancreatic insufficiency, pancreatitis, meconium ileus, right it is yours. The sex organs, obstructive. As was from here. I have one case picked up, see it picked up by a urologist. Congenital absence of vast difference. He sent the case to me and the case was cystic fibrosis. So even urologists can diagnose CM. 
So what is the problem in the lung? I told you, CFTR is cystic fibrosis transmembrane uh, reduction, conduction reduction defect. So this is uh, for the sweat abnormality, hypervisual suspicions, bacterial infection, excessive inflammation, separation, ulceration and bronchitis. So that's the problem in the lung. This is a picture of meconium ID. If you look, do a contrast cinema, you can see that there is a meconium ID, there is ID is there. And these children do have rectal prolapse. If you see a rectal prolapse in a young child, think about CF. And sometimes they manifest unusual manifestations like severe hypokalemia, hypernatremia. That is, children, children will have thoughtless diarrhea which they come with hyponatremia and sometimes with meconium is equivalent. In radiology there is not much dissolving. Recently uh, described they can have hyperinflation because of the asthmatic tendency. They can have peribronchial thickening. They have mortal shadows, ring shadows, large shadows like lung collapse and hyalur retinopathy. And in CT cells you can see cystic bronchial thickening, peribronchial thickening, mucoid impaction, areas of central lobular opacities. And this is a X-ray of a CF child. How see? Look how fast they see progress in one year's time. Lots of modeling shadows here and there. You may think that this could be a uh, millimeter tuberculosis, but since we know that this is a CF child, and clubbing is very very common. So if you see a child with clubbing, usually children do not get clubbing, but in CF invariably they have clubbing. And what are the reports of cystic fibrosis in India? Lots and lots of case reports from India, many of them, but ours is the largest series. It was, we approved them with 24 numbers and a few by uh, uh, autopsy also. So this is the series which is from Chennai. So we have the largest series, but now uh, all the Institute of Medical Sciences New Delhi have taken over, they have a larger series now. Now if you look at the CF population in India, this is recently developed from Delhi. A few centers in Jammu and Kashmir, Delhi has a number of cases, very few from West Bengal. And now if you look at this southern part of India, there are lots of centers where there are cystic fibrosis. And our series shows the largest a uh, number of children from Telisiri and Mahi from Kerala. So in, Ch in Chennai we have performed around 4,900 and out of which we could see around 170 cases of cystic fibrosis. So in Chennai we have diagnosed so far of all these years 170 cases of cystic fibrosis out of which 98 are male and uh, 72 are female. The mean age of diagnosis is 46 months. Thanks to the pediatricians of Chennai, if I name very few, Dr. V. V. Vandarajan and Dr. Balasu Prabhupada, Kanji Kamakoti Children's Hospital, Dr. Vandarajan, Dekhi Nagar, they are all there, they are constantly looking for CF and they picked up the larger number of CF cases in Chennai. And if you look at the total number of cases in India, so far it's 470 out of 110 died. And our oldest patient is 40 years, is from Delhi. In Chennai series it is 28 years now because our oldest patient of 30 years died. So what is the problem in the diagnosis? Teaching in medical schools, nothing. Today, today if you look at the curriculum, nobody teaches cystic fibrosis in India. Awareness, both physicians and parents. Sweat testing only in few centers in India, delayed diagnosis, and we see them in an advanced stage, and we have poor resources. So, how do we suspect? I'll give you a small test here. Child presenting with recurrent pneumonia. Think about here. Meconium medius, very important. I will show you one slide on this. Malus of pancreatic origin, significant steatory of oil droplets in stools. Metabolic alkalosis, hypernatremia, hypokalemia, pseudomonas in pseudom, and child treated as asthma but developing clothing later. 
And if you have a syndrome complex in young individual, I am not talking about age above 40, if somebody, some child has bronchitis, sinusitis, difficult way, abdominal pain, signs of male, okay, this you can stop. In children, if you look at this syndrome complex, this may be cystic fibrosis. In short, to have. Okay, before going into the case scenario, I tell you, so if you look at, if you get any of these kind of presentations, like uh, in a young individual, within the age of maybe uh, between 5 years to because I tell you this, the, the diagnosis is very delayed here is majority of the children who have cystic fibrosis they have malnutrition and they die very early because of diarrhea and very severe respiratory tract infections so they do not reach us for doing the sweat analysis or to prove that it is here so majority of them die in a very early stage. But if you get somebody, they may be by the age of 5 or 10, they come to you because this disease is a little milder and they don't have that lethal uh, progression. So they come to you with prompting they come to you with malnutrition, they come to you with the pancreatic insufficiency, then you can investigate them. And then the best method of investigating them is doing a sweat chloride analysis. The sweat chloride analysis is very simple and uh, I will tell you about that also. So, to highlight and about the case scenario, a two year old uh, healthy term baby was noticed to have abnormal distension. So this is in the hospital setup. This was followed by bile stained vomiting. What are your thoughts? And then if you look at the pediatric, uh, uh, there is not much of a pediatric crowd here. Pediatric pediatrician's crowd. Wow. Yes, sir. What will be the thought, sir? After okay, distension at 24 hours of life, followed by bile stain vomiting. Yes. Yes. Obstruction. Two day old. Two day old. With the vomiting, it will be better. Inverfrate anus. GA malformation, atresia, webs, band, volvulus, publications, sepsis, small left column, metonymitis. Probabilities. So, metonym not passed. Anus patient. Doe abdomen, firm palpable mass, freely mobile. <coughs> and this is the contrast. Here. So that is the meconium idea, impaction there. A specimen of the intestine often showing a thick, inspissated, long meconium plug. So meconium idea is the facts are 10 to 15 percent of the CF have meconium ideas. 10 to 15 percent of CF. Whereas 90 percent of the meconium ideas have CF. So if you come across with meconium ideas, definitely investigate on 65 percent. This is a must. So now it is a basic that majority of the cases from the Sloan Hospital with meconium ideas come to my center for CF screening. And near as in jaundice, occurs in about less than 5% of the uh, patients and it is associated with MI in meconium yes, in 50%. So, every time you see a newborn with meconium yes, or neonatal hepatitis, think CS. So, these are the two things which should alert you in a young child. Now, this is under case scenario, child living growing up, three year old brought for fever and rapid respiratory rate in PD. On examination, has a grand and a respiratory rate of 44 per minute. On auscultation, he has increased vocal resonance to the right mammary and intra mammary area. What is your thoughts? Fever, rapid respiratory rate, a grand, and increased vocal resonance. Consolidation. Consolidation. So, 
So this is the picture. We have the large consolidation in the right upper room. Now the mother says, the child had a pneumonia some time back. And he says that this is the finish of the previous pneumonia on the left side, lingular segment. So child had two pneumonias, or otherwise recurrent pneumonias. So what are the probabilities of recurrent pneumonia? Aspiration, S1. Asthma, left to right shunt, immunodeficiency, cystic fibrosis, or allergic bronchial pulmonary arthrogenesis. Off-switch, allergic bronchial pulmonary arthrogenesis may be one of the reasons because recurrent pneumonia are common in allergic bronchial pulmonary arthrogenesis. But since it is a child, you should think about CF. So recurrent pneumonia has different, different loads. You should think about CF. Other presentations like bronchial crisis is very clearly you can pick up. Because these are the rare presentations which I told, told that I will show you. Now, more than this, I just added one more point in this. In the month of October, that is two months prior to this, this child had a hospitalization with a dehydration and the baseline investigation that then showed low sodium, low potassium and low chloride. So, what is this? Hypotetremic, hypokalemic, hypochromic, alcohol. So, it is the pseudo part of syndrome, what we call. So most of the pediatricians are well aware of this. When they come, when somebody comes with dehydration and diarrhea, they do this uh, electrolytes and they can pick up this. So in the setting of pneumonia with hyponatremic, hypokalemic, hypochromic, metabolic alcohol, think CF. So these are hospital based practices, but in a private practice also, it is very, very easy for you to pick up the because of all these clinical pictures of malnutrition and the steatoria or uh, stools which are bulky and foul smelling and recurrent respiratory tract infections, difficult asthma to treat and child having clubbing. These are the basic of CF. Now how to control the diagnosis? Demonstration of raised sweat chloride in the, is the primary diagnosis of CF. Sweat chloride is more than 60 milli equivalent on two occasions with the clinical findings of suggestive of CF. So sweat chloride is the gold standard for CF diagnosis and even if you are not able to identify the mutations, you can might as well say that this is CF because sweat chloride is always elevated in Fibrosis. Success is being done by bilocarbon ion topology cells. The equipment is very, very costly abroad, but we have developed an indigenous method of doing sweat chloride, and the equipment is made uh, in Chennai with the help of a, uh, an engineer. And we have this machine available in Chennai where we can do sweat tests at a very, very cheap rate. And the sweat test less than 40 milli volts are normal. 40 to 60 hours, you must always think about its borderline. Above 60 is consistent with the CF. Very high uh, test values may be contamination or error. And treatment options, if you look at the I mean, pathophysiology of the disease, you know that physiotherapy and bronchodilators are the important components of the care. Bronchial disease. They should have very good and thorough physiotherapy uh, and give bronchodilators. Antibiotic therapy, especially which is targeted against pseudomonas. So you have uh, good antibiotics, even oral as well as injectable antibiotic, especially chlorpromycin, which we use in young children, is a good, very good anti pseudomonal drug, not very costly. And uh, we had another, another drug which was been taken off from the market, that is Lofogen, which has been very, very useful in CF time, but it has been taken out of the market. But now we use Ciprofloxacin, which has some amount of uh, pseudomonas activity. And we have the inhaled chopramycin also available in India now. 
and pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy is very, very costly in India. That is why it says, uh, we have poor resources, so we are not able to treat these children with pancreatic enzymes. And the only brand which is available is Creon, which is very costly. We have to give about 10,000 units, three to four times a day. That's a very huge amount, which majority of the CF population cannot uh, afford. And vitamin and minerals and all the products of steroids are very, very useful. Long-term macrolides are also useful, but it is costly. And hypertonic saline nebulizations will help in clearing the mucus and immunization against uh, viral diseases. So what are the expectations? In this race, please now show that 40 percent of patients with TF are over the age of 18. Today, average lifespan of these who live to adulthood approximately 35 years and a dramatic increase over the last three decades. Death is usually caused by lung complications or prevent lung complications. And what you can do to save the CF patients? Creating awareness. Talk about CF when you see each other or when you talk to each other with other say, say you look for CF. That is, uh, you may save a child. An early diagnosis, newborn screening is possible. Preserve the lung function by doing chest physiotherapy and appropriate antibiotic therapy. Nutrition support is very important and encourage them to eat well. Infection control, physiotherapy, and transmission from pediatric care to adult care is now more and more common that these children are growing now to adult population. So in conclusion, I would say that TF does occur in India. The precise magnitude of the problem is still not known because we don't have much documentation. Clinical features are similar and have a few atypical features in India. High colonization of recession pseudomonas and multiple morphal types are present in some patients. Diagnosis is missed or delayed. And we have indigenous cell testing method available both in Chennai and in Delhi. And genotype is different. And Screening strategies for mutations are available, but they are very costly. And awareness creation through teaching module is very important. So that is why, as our chairperson said, we are starting national webcasts from next month onwards. The first webcast will be somewhere around the third week of March. It will be attended by about 40 centers in India, which can be viewed in your computer also. I will be sending the uh, link as soon as I get the link uh, to all of you. So I will be discussing about more and more clinical features because it is a little more duration. So a little advanced talk on CF will be presented.